Welcome back YouTube. Today we are going to review the YHM Turbo. This company has been around for quite some time guys, actually since 1951. They started out as a machine shop machining screws, uh, then they got some luck in the 1960s. Uh, they won a government contract making uh, M16 cleaning rods, which is pretty cool. Uh, fast forward, this is the first time I've reviewed a YHM product on my channel. About 1,200 of you were lucky enough to get to demo this in person at my Memorial Day shoot. They were out there with a booth. But today, all of you get a chance to see it up close. Let's go ahead and get started. YHM has always had the reputation of being a decent performing suppressor um, at the cost of weight. Uh, so what they did here is they revamped their lineup. The turbo here is much lighter than their usual rifle cans are. In fact, it's actually lighter than my AAC M4 2000. So they improved weight while maintaining a quality product at a price point that we can all afford. Let's go ahead and get down to the specs. The length of this new can comes in at 6.5 inches, a diameter of 1.5 inches, and that weight I was talking about, 12.8 ounces, which is pretty impressive it's considering this can is constructed of 17.4 stainless steel with an Inconel blast bath. The finish on it is a nice uh, C-Series high temp Cerakote. It's a matte finish. Uh, so that should wear very well. I actually prefer my cans to have a little wear on them. And it is full auto rated down to a 10.5 inch barrel, which again, impressive considering the material is at hand here. And part of that I'm sure is due to the, it ships with a muzzle brake mount. If you're new to rifle cans, uh, an old trick is to use a muzzle brake so it acts as a sacrificial baffle. Okay, so all that unburnt gunpowder that's high velocity and, and hot, it acts as just a sandblasting agent that destroys cans, especially when you're talking about a 10.5 inch barrel. So having all that gunpowder hit the first couple uh, chambers in a break is a lot better than having it hit your first baffle in your suppressor. On top of that, the first blast baffle is in canal, so it's a lot harder and stronger. So that's pretty cool. And this is all on a can with a lifetime warranty that comes in at under $500. It's $489 retail, guys, so pretty neat times, pretty neat times that we're in here. This can meters in at their tested uh, 134 decibels on a 14.5 inch barrel. Now, if you watched uh, Tim's videos, I believe Tim already reviewed this. He was actually getting better numbers on it. Well, of course, it was a 16 inch barrel, so you will. I uh, believe, and I didn't write it down, that his numbers were like 131 with a 16 inch barrel at the muzzle. And he did have higher numbers at the ear though. And you're gonna have that with a can that's a really good performer at the muzzle, because all that back pressure's gotta go somewhere and it's gonna uh, leave the gun as port, as port pop. So the numbers were, were higher at the port than they were at the muzzle. So something to uh, keep in mind. Okay, let's take a closer look at the mount. And I'm pretty sure this is where they saved you guys some money on that MSRP. So they simplified it. There's no collars, push buttons, springs, levers, anything like that. What they did here is, uh, and from what I can tell, it looks like it's gonna work really well. So let me explain how it works. They have an internal shoulder here on this can. So on the inside of the can, there's a face that interacts with the taper on this muzzle brake. And you see the large Acme threads here. As you turn those in, those two shoulders will meet and start to get tight. And to ensure they stay tight, you have four teeth on the mount itself to interlock with all the teeth on the back of the suppressor body. As you tighten it, it locks up solid and those two tapers press very tightly against each other. And that is what is gonna give you perfect alignment with your can so you shouldn't have any baffle strike issues. So we're definitely gonna test that out today. Uh, another cool feature that I wanted to point out before we hit the range is they designed this in welded sections. So if you have any baffle strike issues and you do have a projectile bulge or leave the can, it's gonna happen down here. So if you look, 
they put their logo and the serialized info, the important stuff, in the first two, two inches or so of the uh, suppressor tube. So that is also where the muzzle brake sits on the inside. So the chances of something bad happening that close to the muzzle is pretty much non-existent. Okay, if you're gonna have any alignment issues, of course, things get worse as time goes on, given the trajectory of the projectile on a non-concentric barrel or something like that, you'll have a strike or a tube issue further down the line. Uh, so what they've told me is that they can actually cut this section of the tube off and then replace that whole front half, give it a new paint job, and send it back to its owner. And then they, you know, they kept this again at the sub 500 price point. So you got solid materials, good price, and for the first time, a really good weight. So let's go ahead and hit that range and see just what this thing can do. All right, everyone, today's format is going to be a profile view, a muzzle view, and the downrange view with the microphone placed at 50 yards. Make sure to uh, pay attention to any gas around my face and the front of the can, as well as muzzle flash coming from the brake and the end of the suppressor. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, well, I definitely hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, the can performed really well. I did notice a lot of gas in my face, and that uh, mimics what Tim at Military Arms Channel found out when he metered this. He had a little bit higher readings at the ear. So this is definitely a high back pressure suppressor. Plus side is the muzzle numbers were really good. Uh, actually, I didn't even have any discomfort myself today shooting. As you noticed, I shot all the suppressed scenes without ears on. Um, I don't know if that was good or not. Uh, if Tim was meeting above 140, then that means uh, technically on paper, I was damaging my hearing. Um, but again, I didn't notice any discomfort. So take that from what you will. I might just have bad hearing because I review cans every week. And again, really well built product in a sub $500 category. So there's not a lot of suppressors out there at all that are built for a 5.56 rifle, they can even compete with that price, let alone the build quality, uh, the warranty, and the fit and finish that this suppressor can give you. Uh, so definitely really good bang for the buck, pun intended. Um, again, guys, thank you to my sponsors over at Freedom Munitions. Shot a lot of their 5.56 ammo today. And Coltac, I know I haven't mentioned Coltac in a while, guys, but I did bring his suppressor pouch today. So it is lined, so you can take this hot can, drop it in the pouch, and head home from the range. A lot of you guys that are out there shooting, you get a little carried away, you forget, bang, 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 your time's up on the range, you gotta go home, and you have a 1200 degree can that you can't do anything with. Well, Coltac came out with a lined suppressor pouch. You can just drop it in, throw it in your bag, and you're good to go. While I was using that in between takes to remove this can, it had been a while, since I did a muzzle mountable rifle suppressor and it gets super hot. So it was nice to just kind of throw it over the end and use it as a sock 
disconnect the can, lay it down, get my unsuppressed shots, move the camera angle, get my other shots. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you guys don't see, and that product definitely helped a lot. Uh, if you guys want to check out the Coltac products, Freedom Munitions, etc., I'm going to put all my sponsors below in the description. Promo code, as always, is NFA Review. Thanks, guys. Click that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.